My name is Colonel Jeff Pixley. I'm the commander of basic military training. Thank you for joining the United States Air Force. Thank you for raising your hand and promising to give of yourself, to sacrifice, to do something that most Americans never do. You probably want to know how to be successful in basic military training. Fight for yourself. Don't give up on yourself. And when you're about to, work with each other. Lean on each other because you'll be successful when you are a team. Remember why you are here. Remember those people that came before you. Everything that you do needs to come with a passion and a vigor that is unmatched. When you leave basic military training, you're going to understand how to wear the uniform. You're going to understand what it is to live by the core values, and you're going to know the value of your teammates. If you live up to my expectations, you'll be here. Seven weeks from today, and you'll be about to graduate. Over 240 years ago, General Washington enlisted the assistance of Baron von Steuer, a distinguished Prussian officer, to help instill discipline. Baron von Steuben arrived at Valley Forge in February of 1778, facing an army of several thousand undisciplined, half-starved, wretched men in rags. To correct these conditions, he set to work immediately and wrote regulations designed to teach the discipline of drill to a model company of 120 selected men. Discipline became a part of the military for these individuals as they learned to respond to commands without hesitation. As they mastered the art of drill and began to work as a team, this group developed a collective sense of pride in themselves and in their union. Watching this model company perform, observers were amazed to see how quickly and efficiently the troops could be massed and maneuvered into battle, different battle formations. Later, members of this model company were assigned throughout the regular army to teach drill. It was through this simple emphasis on drill that the effectiveness and efficiency of Washington's Continental Army were improved. In 1789, Baron von Steuben wrote the American Army's first field manual, the regulations for the order and discipline of the troops of the United States. The drill procedures placed into effect at Valley Forge remained unchanged for over 85 years, and many of these same procedures are still in use today. One form of drill is the salute. Since early times, men at arms have used some form of salute as an exchange of grief, the most popular of which has been the hand salute. This exchange has been preserved and it used, continued, in all modern militaries, which inherit their traditions from the age of chivalry. Throughout today's ceremony, you will see the fights presenting arms as one form of the military salute. The civilian counterpart of the salute is manifested in various ways such as placing the right hand over the heart when the national anthem is played, or raising the hand when greeting a friend. The military salute is given in the same manner as a gesture of recognition and a friendly greeting to a comrade in the honorable profession of arms. To maintain the proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times that you will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the National Anthem, the playing of the Air Force Song, the reciting of the Oath of Enlistment, and the Airmen's Creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the National Anthem and as it passes during the review. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, and after the flags have passed, you may return your hand to your side. As the flights pass in review, applause is appropriate, but please limit that applause so that others may hear the narration of the names and hometowns of the military training instructors. Please refer reserve the strictest respect during our oath of enlistment. During the oath, service members pledge their lives to, su to support and defend the Constitution and our country. At this time, we'd like to take the moment to inform you of the specific flight locations on the parade field, as viewed from the bleachers from your left to your right.
Academic Excellence Flight, Flight 184, led by Technical Sergeant Mateus Tercero. Flight 185, led by Technical Sergeant Andrew Shrek. PT Excellence Flight, Flight 186, led by Staff Sergeant Elaine Garcia. Flight 187, led by Technical Sergeant Travis Lage. Flight 188, led by Technical Sergeant Nina Seppelu. Flight 189, led by Technical Sergeant Tyree Porter. In the center of the parade field is the color guard led by Technical Sergeant J.R. Roberts. The Drum and Bugle Corps, Flight 197, led by Technical Sergeant Kevin Bird. The flights selected to carry our national, state, and territorial flags are Flight 195 and Flight 196, led by Technical Sergeant Elaine Miles. Flight 190, led by Master Sergeant John Ridley. Flight 191, led by Technical Sergeant Alexander Davis. Flight 192, led by Technical Sergeant Colin Gentry. Flight 193, Led by Technical Sergeant Fausto Hill. Flight 194. Led by Staff Sergeant Griffin Bryan. At this time, please find a place to sit. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the arrival of our official party. I invite you to join with me in prayer though on this glorious morning. Gracious and almighty God, we pause and thank you for this joyous occasion that brings us together as airmen, leaders, families, and friends. We celebrate on this special day of achievement these airmen of the 320th Training Squadron. We recognize the sacrifices made to become members of the world's greatest air force. Separation from family and loved ones, weeks of training, the physical demands, all that brought them here today, ready to serve. May these Gators of the 320 Training Squadron always live with honor, knowing that you can't stop the rock. We recognize that these airmen did not arrive here on, the own, on their own, and so we thank you for their families and their friends who equally made sacrifices possible. We offer our gratitude to the men and the women of the 320 Training Squadron for the countless hours invested in these young airmen. Loving God, we ask your blessing upon these families, friends, instructors, and staff for the investment they have made in these airmen's lives. For these men and women about to graduate and for all military personnel deployed around the world, we ask in the words of the prophet that the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It's in your most holy name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Good morning, and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training, Colonel Jeff Pixley. 
Chief Senior Enlisted Lee, Air Force Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. The reviewing official, the command, 914th Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Laura Morrison. The Senior Enlisted Lee, the command chief, 914th Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Donald Scott Peters, accompanied by his wife, Yvonne. From the graduating squad, the command, 320th Training Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Gerald Fenster, accompanied by his wife, Gina. The Senior Enlisted Lead, 320th Training Squadron, Chief Master Sergeant Jennifer Small. Also in attendance today, the Commander, 81st Training Wing, Colonel Jason Allen, accompanied by his wife, Mike. The Command Chief, 148th Fighter Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Joseph Mickerton, accompanied by his wife, Jolene. The Acting Command Chief, 37th Training Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Yusuf Saab. Ladies and gentlemen, Rendering a flying salute to our graduated airmen is a TC-135 Strato tanker, call sign Bison 82. Bison 82 is flown by Major Chris Pike, Major Jared Cummins, and Captain David Carr. The boom operators for the aircraft are Senior Master Sergeant Eric Aikenbach and Technical Sergeant Mike Randolph. This aircraft is from the 328th Air Refueling Squadron, 914th Air Refueling Wing, Niagara Falls, Air Reserve Base, New York. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoy today's ceremony. Our Commander of Army is Master Sergeant Precious Roy. Colonel Laura Morrison will review today's ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the national anthem. Thank you. Please be seated. Over the last seven and a half weeks, the men and women before you have transformed from civilians into motivated, disciplined warriors with the foundation to serve in the most powerful military the world has ever known. Once they leave basic military training, they will continue on to technical training to learn the skills needed to perform in one of 118 specialties. They will then move on to serve at one of 84 installations around the globe or work directly with our sister services. As they move on to technical training, they will continue to focus on adapting to military requirements, achieving occupational proficiency, and learning how to be highly productive members of the armed forces. These men and women will prepare for increased responsibilities and must ensure they are trained, qualified, and ready to deploy and operate in an expeditionary environment. These graduates are the future of our national defense and will pave the way for the generations that will follow.
737th Training Group, United States Air Force, Joint Base San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. Subject, Commander's Excellence. The Commander's Excellence Streamer is awarded to Flight 187 for their significant accomplishments demonstrating teamwork, excellence, and a spirit of corps during the period of 17 January 2023 to 9 March 2023. Signed, Jeffrey Pixley, Colonel, United States Air Force. The Commander's Excellence Flight was led by Technical Sergeant Darrell Baldwin and Technical Sergeant Travis Lage. Of the hundreds of thousands of American citizens that enter the workforce each year, less than 1% have joined the ranks of the United States military. The graduates before you have reached a milestone in their military journey and will require your continued support to assist them in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, the graduates passing in review today represent a portion of the 35,000 men and women who will complete basic military training this year. The 737 Training Group provides all recruits the essential military training to become motivated members of the world's greatest Air Force. The military training instructors are responsible for the indoctrination, development, and discipline of the Air they have dedicated endless hours to ensure all training objectives are met. Today's graduates have proven through academic studies, military training, physical training, and the development of teamwork that they are ready to take their place in the United States Armed Forces. turn left onto the bomb run to pass and review. They will march over the enlisted hero call. The men and women recognized on the papers have been awarded our nation's highest honors, representing heroic and unselfish actions as members of the United States military in armed conflict. Their decorations include 
nine medals of honor, 23 Air Force crosses, and 162 silver stars awarded for bravery during encounters with hostile enemy combatants. These enlisted heroes serve to inspire all service members to execute their duties courageously and with honor in their service to this great nation. We would like to direct your attention to our national, state, and territorial flags. At these flags pass in review. Please stand and render the appropriate courtesies for our national flag. As a reminder, military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. We ask that our civilian guests stand and place their right hand over their hearts. Veterans and military members not in uniform may either render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. Once the flags have passed, please be courteous of others and be seated in order to allow our guests the opportunity to view the flights as they pass in review. Precious Roy, military training instructor, hometown, Birmingham, Alabama. Danflow, Flight 197, led by Technical Sergeant Kevin Bird, military tra training instructor, hometown, Saratosa, Florida. trainer, hometown, Flint, Michigan. The Color Guard, led by Technical Sergeant J.R. Roberts, military training instructor, hometown, St. Robert, Missouri. National, state, and territorial flags are Academic Excellence Flight 
Flight 195, Hi. Flight 196, led by Technical Sergeant Delaney Miles, Master Military Training Instructor, hometown Prince George County, Maryland. Flight 190, led by Master Sergeant John Ridley, Military Training Instructor, hometown Lisay, Illinois. Flight 191, led by Technical Sergeant Alexander Davis, Military Training Instructor, hometown Conway, Arkansas. Flight 192, led by Technical Sergeant Colin Gentry, Military Training Instructor, hometown Kingsford, Michigan. Flight 193, led by Technical Sergeant Fausto Gill, Military Training Instructor, hometown Houston, Texas. Flight 194, led by Staff Sergeant Griffin Prime, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Traverse, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing and singing of the Air Force song. Musical support for this morning's ceremony has been provided by the graduates from Flight 197, performing under the direction of Master Sergeant Nathan Held, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Norma Linda, California. These, these individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic training syllabus and training requirements, Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours to practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force's core value, service before self. With each drum and bugle performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music and formal military ceremonies. I'd like to take a moment to congratulate all of our honor graduates as well as their families. Basic military training honor graduates distinguish themselves by being ranked in the top 10% of all graduates in their class. The exceptional personal dedication, integrity, service before self, and sustained excellence they display throughout basic military training earned them this outstanding distinction. As the flights march forward for the open enlistment, we would like to thank all of the families and friends here in support of those graduating today.
behalf of the United States military and basic military training, we extend our thanks to the many friends and families of America for your support of our mission and the greatest air power the world has ever known. Your words of encouragement helped motivate these graduates through seven and a half weeks of basic military training. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Morrison will now come forward and address our graduating class. So good morning, everyone, and welcome. What an honor it is to look out in the audience and see all of the family joining us today. Seven and a half weeks ago, you entrusted us with the nation's most valuable treasure, your loved one. Your support has pushed these airmen to complete, to successfully complete basic military training and join the world's greatest air force. I want to take this opportunity and thank you for your support, your encouragement, and most and most importantly, thank you for your trust. It is my great honor to introduce the airmen from the 320th Training Squadron as our nation's newest airmen. Don't lie. 
You are our future. Now, you've been told this many times before, and at this point it may sound a little repetitive, but I challenge you to embrace it. Learn your job, and as you're learning your job, and you continue to grow and develop the professional skills and your abilities, Madam Chairman, think about how you can make what you are doing Colonel Morrison will now administer the oath of enlistment. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Colonel Morris. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing while our graduates recite the Airman's Creed and for the departure of the official party. I am an American Airman. I am a warrior. I have answered my nation's call. I am an American Airman. My mission is to fly, fight, and break.
1,800 hours. When dropping off members, please stay in your vehicle.